it's toes are. You know, something strange happens when people get saved. They have or make a commitment to Jesus. They usually, in these modern times, go running up to an altar call or do some kind of massive exodus to come forward to make a public profession to God, to hear the message and, you know, do it again or again, sometimes six or seven times, you know, to make sure they're saved, to go forward to give their life to Jesus, or to ask Jesus into their life, or to accept the gift of eternal life, or however way the preacher preached it, and the people responded. But something interesting happens is that when they're in a crowd of people, they feel that massive, you know, unction, you know, to go and do something that maybe they don't understand completely what they're doing. Maybe they don't realize the commitment they're making, or they don't understand completely, even after they do it, when they're given some discipleship and follow-up, really, the bottom line. Because in salvation, what is the bottom line? Do you know? Is it this whole idea of the four spiritual laws that in some way you have to recognize you're a sinner and that oh you're everybody's going to hell and that you know you gotta be saved from hell so the cross makes this you know bridge that you can cross over and somehow you know jesus isn't the real person that you're making lord of your life but that he comes in you know and he makes a little bridge so you can cross over you know and then you can know god and you can be saved it doesn't sound like the way jesus said it Have you ever thought about the gospel message? What is your gospel? What is your message? Do we just get them in, bring them in, fast, clean them up, fix them up, ship them out, package them, and see if they're ready to go into the world and make disciples and do our religious duty? Do we become just another religious machine pumping out carbon copies of ourselves or our theology or a religious mania? Do you know Jesus? Did you meet Jesus? Is Jesus speaking to you? Is Jesus real to you? Is Jesus alive in you? Can you hear his voice? Do you know when he's talking to you? Do you understand what Jesus said? And have you heard what he's saying today to you? I know what Sunday does. Because see, Sunday is a nice religious day. And we all know that. But do we talk to Jesus today, not Sunday? Do we walk with Jesus today? not Monday? Do we take the time to listen to what God says to us and do we do what he says? Because if you're not, maybe, maybe, you might not be in the will of God. You might not be doing what God said. And you might not be accomplishing what God wants you to do. Maybe, just maybe, you're not really in the category you want to be. I see that God made vessels of honor and vessels of wrath in that. If we're little stick pins, which one are you? Are you in a vessel of wrath? Because this is where you were before you got saved. Have you moved into become a vessel of honor? Is God proud of you? Is God doing what he wants with you? Is God taking you out and showing your life to all the angels in heaven and saying, look at my, look at my son. Look at my son. Yeah, he's not perfect. But he's got little pointy ends. But you know what? He's mine. Are you a vessel wrapped? But you got saved, but you're doing the work but you don't know who you are. You don't know where you are. 
We don't know who Jesus is. Religion isn't going to save you. It can't. Only Jesus can. Faith won't save you, but it'll bring you to a place of a personal relationship. Because if you don't know Jesus, you aren't saved. Truth will not give itself to a rebel. He that followeth me shall have the light of life, John 8, 12. Too many people consider Jesus Christ a convenience. We make him a lifeboat to get us to shore, a guide to find us when we are lost. We reduce him simply to a big friend to help us when we are in trouble. That is not biblical Christianity. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. And when a man is willing to do his will, he is, re repre he is repenting and the truth flashes in. For the first time in his life, he finds himself willing to say, I will do the will of the Lord even if I die for it. That is Jesus Christ as Lord. If any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And where did Jesus go? Illumination begins in his heart. That is the repentance. For he has been following his own will up until now. And now he decides to do the will of God. He decides to follow God. He decides to know God. Before the word of God can mean anything inside of me, there must be an obedience to the word that God has written. There must be an obedience to the word which I hear. For faith comes by hearing. There must be an obedience to what Jesus is saying. Truth will not give itself to a rebel. You can rebel and you can argue and you can debate and be an advocate and you can fight against all the different righteous causes that there are in the world and think you're a Christian. And in religion, you are. Your religion is Christian. But is your relationship Christ-like? Is it a ongoing visual observation of seeing your Father in heaven and only doing those things that you see your Father doing? as Jesus said he did. Are you doing like Jesus? Truth will not impart life to a man who will not obey the light. If you are disobeying Jesus Christ, you cannot expect to be enlightened spiritually. No man can know the Son except the Father tell him. No man can know the Father except the Son reveal him. No man can know the Son except the Father no man can know the Father except the Son declares him. I can know about God, and that is the body of truth. But I cannot know God, the soul of truth, unless I am ready to be obedient. True discipleship is of being Jesus Christ and learning of Him and following Him and doing what He tells you to do and keeping His commandments and carrying out His will, no matter what. That kind of person is a Christian and no other kind is. Let's think about that again. True discipleship is obeying Jesus Christ and learning of Him, following Him, doing what He tells you to do, keeping His commandments, and carrying out His will. Again, I have to ask you, as I ask myself, today, have I heard from Jesus? Today, am I doing what He said? Today, am I obeying His will? Today, am I responding to his word? Today, am I acting, becoming, revealing Jesus working in me, through me, and to me all the things he promised he would do for me as well as accomplish his purposes in me? And in frank matter, I have to say no. Because in part, I'm not. Sometimes I'm not 100% committed or I'm not 100% given over to the will of God. And in those times, I feel pulled back. I know God isn't fully possessing me as I want Him to. So what do you do? How can you change, rearrange? How can you... Have you blown it and you can't go back? Have you crucified the Christ one last time and you crossed over the line and you can't ever return? You think so? I don't. Because you see, 
for grace to be applied to me, I need to be graceful to others. And as I am forgiving of others, then I am forgiven. As I apply grace to others, then grace is extended to me. And as I yield myself to the forgiveness that God has for me, then I know. And I show forth. And I feel and I know that Jesus is in me. And that he's working through me to accomplish his purposes. You want to know God? Ask Jesus into your life. Don't worry about all the rigmarole. Just call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct your path. If you don't have a crowd to go to and you don't have a concert to make a commitment and you don't know what the four spiritual laws are, who cares? Ask God and God will respond. Cry out to Jesus and Jesus will come. Ask Jesus to forgive you and He will. Ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life and he'll begin to speak to you. And when he does, when you know you're hearing God speak to you personally, and it's just to you, not to me, not to anyone else around you, not to ten thousands in a concert, when it's you and Jesus, and you know you heard from him, can I give you a hand? That means you're saved. That means you're a Christian. That means Jesus loves you.